Hello everyone, Rachel Weaver here. I'm on faculty and staff at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. I've been putting together a series of videos in which I ask various members of our faculty crafting questions. So today we have Jody Hollander with us. Thanks for being here, Jody. Thanks for having me. Today, um, Jody is going to talk with us specifically about sound and musicality in poetry. So Jody, I will let you take it from here and tell us um, what you think is important for us to consider when we're trying to better incorporate sound and musicality in our poetry? Absolutely. Well, to me, sound is really one of the most important parts of a poem. I feel that a poem with good sound really distinguishes it from a piece of prose. So when I'm teaching, I'm always looking for ways for students to enhance the sound, the musicality of their poems. And there are a few different ways to do this. One is through internal sound. So things like assonance, consonants, um, and alliteration. We can also work on sound through repetition. Um, and then if you want to get a little fancier, you can look at rhyme, which is another great technique for incorporating sound. But I think it was Duke Ellington who said famously, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. So the sound really helps to make a poem ear pleasing and to make a poem enjoyable to its readers. And, and how do you, I'm, I'm interested in, um, how do you know when it's, when it's right? Or, or how do you, I guess maybe a better question is, how do you know when it's off? Right. Well, I think if you even think back to when you were a kid and you were learning, say, nursery rhymes, um, or you were learning songs, you were attracted to the things that were, you were likely attracted to the things that were really ear pleasing, that sounded good to your ear. And so I, I would say that the ear knows what sounds good. Um, I think we are all sort of preconditioned to like things that are musical. And so if something isn't musical, it's not that it necessarily is going to sound bad, but that when we're writing poetry, we want to give some sort of uh, oral pleasure to our, to our listeners. Um, and so therefore, through creating ear-pleasing lines of poetry, the, the poems become more enjoyable. And do you think that your own sense of that musicality has either um, maybe been fine-tuned over the course of the time that you have been writing? Um, or do you think that it's become more distinct for your own poetry? I guess, I guess I'm asking two questions. The first is, do you get better at it the more you work with it in your own writing, do you think? Yes, absolutely. And I was trained by a poet, the poet Robert Mezzi, who had me learn um, meter and form first. So I really had to train my ear to understand, okay, this is what a line of iambic pentameter sounds like. It sounds like ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And that's sort of like the basis there. Um, maybe I have a line with four beaters, maybe I have a line with six beaters, maybe I have a line with two beaters. And so where, where does that fall within relation to iambic pentameter? Um, but there, are, I mean, that's, sometimes I think saying that can intimidate people because they think, oh God, she's gonna make me learn meter. I may do that in some of my classes, but I don't always do that. And I like to think that there are lots of different ways that a person can train their ear and can fine tune their ear to sound. And assonance, consonance, alliteration, um, repetition, um, and then end rhymes are also ways that one can work with sound without necessarily having to learn meter and form. Of course, if you do learn meter, that will help you as well. Um, but it's true, the more you work with it, the better, certainly the better you'll get with it. Do you think that people or poets um, sort of develop their own um, type of musicality and, and, and sort of their own way of using sound in, in poetry? I mean, do you think that that is um, something that we are working toward as poets potentially, um, you know, developing, like, first of all, developing an understanding of musicality and sound, among many other things, um, and then sort of shifting it a little to use it in a way that is specific to us? Absolutely. And there's really, there's not like a right way to use sound. I think if there were a right way, it would, it would be that you were successfully 
using sound to enhance meaning and feeling in, in a poem. But there are many ways uh, a person can do that. Um, you could just simply use repetition, and that would be a, a way of effectively using sound. Or maybe you want to repeat that E sound over and over again, um, or the OO sound, kind of the way that Sylvia Plath does sometimes in her poems. And, and that sort of binds the poem together with sound. I, I personally think everyone should learn a little bit about how to incorporate sound uh, into their work because certainly uh, prose can be very elegant, it can be very musical, and learning to fine tune one's ear, even in a subtle way, would absolutely be helpful to a writer of any stripe, definitely a prose writer. I think that it is fairly imperative for um, prose writers to take poetry classes um, yeah. for exactly what you're exactly what you are talking about to bring um, attention to how the words work together to create a certain um, pacing and sound and musicality. So I think it's not only important for poets, but um, just as important for prose writers. Absolutely, and playwrights and songwriters and anyone who wants to express themselves through words. Thank you so much, Jody. I really appreciate your time and you allowing me to ask you some questions. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.